Joshua chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, the Bible says this. Now the priests who carried the ark remained, say it with me, standing in the, middle. standing in the, middle. someone say middle. middle, middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people just as Moses had directed Joshua. The people hurried over and as soon as all of them had, oh. you should have had a little bit more um for that because that's a very, very, very themed word in our season. And as soon as all of them had, the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side. Someone say other side. Other side. Hey, while the people watched. So let's pray and we're going to get into this message. Father in heaven, bless this word. Bless everybody's hearts. Align us in accordance to your will. Let us have a focused mind. Let us come into this moment with a heart that is ready to receive from you. God, I pray that we may become passionate about your word, that we may come hungry, craving after your presence, after your direction, after your wisdom, and after your word. I leave this moment in the palm of your hands. May you use me as an instrument in your hands to just deliver what you have prepared for your people tonight. Thank you because I know that you are in this place. Now I pray, bless us through the power of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, we say, amen. amen. So let me give you the context of what we just read, and then we're going to get into the message very quickly. But are you excited? Yeah. Okay, here's what happened. So there's this nation called Israel. Israel gets trapped by another nation called Egypt. Egypt enslaves Israel. And then the people of Israel, which are the people of God, cry out to God. And so for about 400 years, they are slaves. And then God, after he heard their cry, raised up a guy called Moses. Moses ends up freeing these people. He delivers them and they actually transition out of slavery into freedom and into the wilderness. Now, during the wilderness, that first generation of Israelites or people of Israel die. They died. They didn't make it. They had a promise from God, but they didn't make it. They didn't see the promised land. They were supposed to transition out of Egypt from slavery into freedom so they could cross over. Someone say cross over. Cross over. Into the promised land. So there's a transition from slavery to freedom so that they could cross over into the promise they want promise but unfortunately they all died they all die and then to make matters worse Moses dies so the guy that's in second command kind of like Troy he's like oh shoot what do I do his name is Joshua and then God calls Joshua to lead the people and he calls them to cross over someone say cross over so they end up crossing over this river called the Jordan River. And it was almost like God wanted to verify, give Joshua a blue verification mark so that people could see that God was really with Joshua. And they end up crossing over. And that's where we picked up the story today. That is what we read, that they were crossing over from one side to the other. And as I'm reading this passage, it kind of makes me realize that this passage is symbolic to our season. Because they were crossing over from one era to the next. They crossed over from wanderers to people who were going to become conquerors. They were people that were circling and repeating. And now they were going to become people that were driving and leading. They were going to transition. They were going to cross over. Someone say cross over. They were going to cross over to the other side and them crossing over this river is almost like a symbolic representation of what we experienced last night. We crossed over from 2022 into 2023. Maybe you were circling and wondering, but now you are going to start conquering. You were not leading, you were repeating, but now in 2023, you're going to start leading. God is calling us to cross over. Someone say cross over. He's... He's calling us to go from one side to the other side. So I want to welcome you to my title. Can you say it with me? Say neighbor. neighbor. Hello, Hello. From, the side. from the other side. So I want to talk about some observations first. There are some observations that I want us to make when it comes to the passage that we just read. And the first observation that I want you to actually make is not a really happy one. It's a sad one. And that was that Joshua lost Moses. 
And when we're reading the Bible, we're reading the Bible so quickly, so rapidly, that we don't actually sink into the details and make it personal or real to our lives. But think about the moment that this man lost Moses. What must have he have felt? Because this is exactly what some of us experienced in 2022. Where some of us possibly lost someone or something. Like for example, one of our main leaders, he's a very powerful leader. He's our Richmond campus director. His name's Stanley Wu. You wanna put this chair over there for me? I feel like the spirit of God is on me. I'm not sitting today. Stanley Wu has been here for, since year one. But this year, this past year in 2022, he lost his mother. Yet he remained faithful. In the season that is the most painful for a son to lose their mother, he remained faithful. He kept on leading. He kept on pushing forward. He kept on pushing to cross over. And some of us possibly have experienced what he experienced where we lost a loved one. Others of you did not lose someone. You lost something. Maybe you possibly lost a dream. Something that God had instructed you to do. Something that God placed in your heart to do and you lost it in 2022. The instruction that God had given you, the, the inspiration that God possibly put inside your heart to serve, to get connected to the body of Christ, which is the church. The, 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 the dream to build for God's kingdom or maybe it wasn't in church or in ministry per se. Maybe it was a business. Maybe it was something that God wanted you to start, a relationship, a marriage. Maybe something that you were dreaming of that God had placed inside your heart. It died. The possibilities to do it died. The opportunities died. The doors that were open died. And everything died. And, and you're supposed to cross over. But you lost Moses. And when we're reading the story, we don't really actually place ourselves in the feelings or the emotions or the experience of the people that we're reading about. And we skim over it so quickly that we ignore how to make it relatable and real to our lives. Therefore, we find that the word of God becomes irrelevant to us. But the word of God is not irrelevant. It is the most relevant thing in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, in your life, in all that you are and all of your existence. The word of God is life. It is real and it speaks. And there's so many of us in this room that possibly lost something before we crossed over. We lost our passion. I don't know if you've heard the term languishing. It is a very popular term nowadays, especially after the pandemic happened. Where you don't have mental health, but you don't have mental illness. Where you still get out of bed, but you feel like you're stuck in a cloud and you go to work and you go to school and you meet with your friends and you go to church and you go through the motions, but inside you are dead. You lost your life. You lost your passion. You lost the sparkle in your beautiful eyes. So now you're in this place where the church is talking about crossing over. God is speaking to you, cross over. God is sharing with you, hello, from the other side. But you still feel like you're on the same side. And we're like Moses, or sorry, we're like Joshua. We lost Moses. We're about to cross over, we're supposed to cross over. But, but I'm still in the suffering and in the pain of what I've lost. That's the first observation that I want us to make about Joshua. He was, he was about to cross over, he was about to lead an entire nation from one era to another, from wanderers to conquerors. But he had suffering and he had pain. He had lost Moses. I'm wondering how many of you have lost Moses. Number two, here's the second observation. The priest stood in the middle. The priest stood in the middle until Israel had crossed completely. And they held the Ark of the Covenant the entire time. Something that stood out to me when I was reading this story, when I'm reading this passage, is that the priests were instructed by God through Joshua that as the Jordan River split and as Israel is crossing over, they had the responsibility and the mandate to stand in the middle. They had to stand in the middle of the transition point and they had to wait until everybody had crossed over. Someone say wait. I believe that some Israelites crossed over in the morning. There's 3.6 million of them. I believe others of them passed through the Jordan and transitioned through the Jordan River in the afternoon. I believe that others passed in the evening. And I believe that some passed after midnight. But here's the thing that God instructed the priests. You have to stay in the middle until they all 
cross over. Here's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I feel that, and I hope that I can deliver it to you as the way that he made me feel it. Here's what God tried to tell me. He said, I am Jesus, your high priest, and I stood in the middle until you crossed over. Jesus never leaves you in the middle. Jesus stands in the middle until you cross over. Whether if it's in the morning, at noontime, afternoon, evening, night, or midnight. God is faithful. Some of you were not supposed to make it to 2023. Some of you weren't. Some of you were supposed to end everything before 2023 started. Some of you were not supposed to. Oh, did you hear the, promo, the, the opener that we made? At the beginning of the experience? Yeah. Where some had to have, where you have your eyes to open, some had theirs remained shut. But Jesus never leaves. Jesus will never leave you. Even if it takes you a while to cross over. Because some of you are like, oh man, we made it into 2023 and I still feel the same. Baby, you're still crossing over. And Jesus is the priest in the middle that never leaves. And he's going to wait until you finish. Because that is how God works. Many of you weren't supposed to make it with everything that you went through in 2022. You weren't supposed to make it, but you made it. Because Jesus is my priest. He's our priest standing in the middle. Someone say in the middle. In the middle. Here's the third observation. After they crossed, nothing happened. <laughs> like, they legit crossed the, the Jordan River. They went from like, pretend this is it, the speaker. They crossed over. And that was it. Yeah. No magic. No miracle. And I'm wondering what they were thinking because they had just witnessed something supernatural take place, which was the Jordan River splitting so they can cross over. And they're like, oh my God, crossing over 2022 to 2023. They crossed over and nothing happened. It was dirt on one side and it was more dirt on the other side. The Bible says something very interesting, though. As you keep on reading, I think it says that the tribe of Reuben crossed and there was about 40,000 men, watch this, listen to the description, ready for battle. Crossing over sometimes is a transition that you will not feel or see its effects. They had just made it to the other side. And like I said, there was no magic. There was no miracle. There was nothing. You don't always see or feel the fruit of a transition right away. Because the, watch this, and I hope that you catch this, because the experience of arriving isn't the same as the anticipation of getting there. And I don't know if that made sense because I said that at the 3 p.m. for the Spanish people, they had no clue what I just meant. So let me unpack it for you. Have you ever been so hungry and looked forward to your food? And once, like, have you ever been so hungry? It was just... Like you started dreaming about it even though you were awake. You can smell what the cook is cooking. You can, you, can, you can salivate the food. You haven't put it in your mouth yet. You're so hungry. You can't wait to savor the texture and the flavors of the food that you're about. Especially if you've been craving it all day. Like chicken nuggets. Yes. They're so good. If you're Filipino, pancit or spring rolls, lumpia. Is that how you say it? If you're Hispanic, tacos, tamales, uh, and so on and so forth. And you're, 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 you're excited to eat, but the cook is taking a while. And then all of a sudden, you get the plate served. You've been waiting for it for a long time. You actually end up taking a bite of the burger, the taco, the steak, the lumpia, whatever it is that you've been salivating for two hours, and you start eating. And as you eat, you can't even enjoy it because you've passed hunger. Wow. Have you had those experiences? Yeah. Were you just so hungry that you're not even hungry no more? Yeah. That's where we sometimes enjoy the journey before the arrival. Wow. It's the same thing with graduating. Like if you graduate high school, you go to sleep, you wake up, you transitioned, but you still feel the same the next day. I remember I graduated from grade 12. I crossed the stage and it was amazing. And yeah, I woke up the next day and I still felt the same. I felt the same even though I had transitioned. I felt the same even though I had 
crossed over. Yeah. It's the same thing with, with marriage and a wedding. Yeah, yeah you, you can say I do and go from fiance to a wife in one night, but one night will make you into a wife. Ooh. Or a husband. How many of us know that it takes 10 years, 5 years, 7 years, 10, 11 years, 12, sometimes 40 for some to actually go from fiancé or girlfriend to a wife or for young men to go from single to husband after marriage. They get married but they still act single. They get married but they still think single. They get married but they still talk single. They get married, but they still type single. How many of us know that a wedding is a transitional moment? But we do not see the effects of the transition right away. I think I'm preaching life. You don't always see the effects of a transition the moment that it happens. The results take place through partnership between what God does and what you do. Because you can transition without feeling it. And the problem with transitioning without feeling it, because we're just such a feely generation, the problem with transitioning without feeling it is this, that even though you're meant to transition so that you could cross over, you can get stuck in transition. And that's one of the worst places to be, to be stuck in transition. Because you're in a place that's temporary not permanent and you made a temporary place a permanent place and everything that God has called you to possess you don't because you got stuck Simon say it with me in transition you were supposed to cross over but you didn't so how do you cross over to the other side without getting stuck in transition because I want to kind of like paint a picture of how you can get stuck in transition the first generation of israel they transitioned from slavery into freedom but they died in transition they did not cross over into the promised land a place that was meant to be transitional became a permanent place of death it is imperative that you understand that God transitioned you from 2022 into 2023. But you don't want to get stuck at midnight. You want to say it with me? Cross over. So that you could be like to your neighbor, hello, from the other side. Maybe not your neighbor. How about the enemy? Hello. Say it with me? From the other side. So this begs the question, how do we transition without getting stuck in transition? How to cross over to the other side? Number one, get your speech right. Look what Proverbs 18.21 says. The tongue can speak words that bring life or? Those who love to talk must be ready to accept what it brings. Here's what you don't want to do to cross over. You don't want to say things like this. I'll never change. You don't, and sometimes, sometimes it's just so automatic in our language to curse our lives when God wants to bless it. And we end up cursing what God wants to bless and then we end up getting mad at God. Going, why did you allow this in my life? And God's like, I didn't allow it. Your tongue did. And we blame God for evil. And we blame God for the bad things that happened to good people. And we blame God for the things that happened in my family. But have you ever stopped to check what your tongue said? Because here's what the Bible says. The tongue has the power of life and death. And if you speak life, you will reap life. But if you speak death, then you will reap death. And so many of us talk death over ourselves. I'm so fat, I'm never going to lose weight. I'm always going to be the fat kid. I'm always going to cycle back from losing weight to gaining weight, losing weight to gaining weight. And you talk so much trash to yourself and then you wonder why your life is miserable. 
I'm always going to be this, or I'm always going to be that, or I'll never amount to anything, or I'll never be able to measure up. And you speak so much trash, and you speak so much death, that you end up cursing what God wants to bless. The nation of Israel crossed over from Egypt, but didn't cross over into the promise. All because of their speech. Do you know why the first generation of Israel died in the wilderness and didn't cross over to the promise even though they were right in front of it? Because they spoke negatively. Wow. In the Ten Commandments, God is like, you shall not worship any other gods. And they worshiped other gods. They actually made a god. And that didn't keep them from crossing over. You know what kept them from crossing over? The tongue, my friend. Tiny little thing. But my goodness, is it potent. (laughs) If you're a gossip, be careful. God's listening to you too. What you say in secret, let me tell you, it's not really in secret. And if you love gossip, be careful. Because if you love to hear it, they're probably talking and gossiping about you too. The tongue is spicy. In a really bad way. (laughs) It has the power. So the nation of Israel actually did not cross over. Even though they, listen to me, even though they transitioned from 2022 to 2023, they did not possess what 2023 was supposed to give them. I wonder how many of you are standing right now on the threshold between 2022 and 2023. And God's about to turn things around in a good way. But the problem is your tongue speaks curse. I wonder how many women are going to be saying, my husband's useless. (laughs) Well, of course he's useless if that's what you keep cursing him with. I wonder how many husbands say, oh man, I just don't know why I married this woman. (laughs) Yeah, Amen. I rebuke that in Jesus' name too. (laughs) Amen. Amen. (laughs) Well, what, 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 is, what is this husband or wife, what are they expecting if instead of blessing, they're cursing? Wow. You can't expect blessing from a tongue that speaks curse. And I'm wondering how many of you are right now, right in front of the promise, but you keep messing it all up with the way that you speak. 2023 is going to be the same thing as 2022. Why would you speak like that? You can legitimately be where God wants you to be, to cross over into the next, but remain in transition for a lack of faith in your speech. You could be where God wants you to be. Some of you are ready to receive promise. Some of you are ready to receive God's goodness. Some of you are ready to receive God's best. Some of you are ready to receive healing. Some of you are ready for a miracle in your mind. Some of you are ready for a miracle in your soul. Some of you are ready to transition from single to dating. Oh, now you cheer. Some of you are ready from... (laughs) Some of you are ready to experience... God's goodness, his faithfulness, because he's a good, good father. And I'm so sorry if you think that God is a punishing father. Jesus took all your punishment on the cross. God does not look for opportunities to punish you. So some of you grew up with that. And so when I start speaking blessing, you're like, I don't know, this doesn't sit right with me. This is a prosperity church. No, it's a biblical church. He's a good father. Read the gospels. Read the Bible. Stop watching YouTube videos and get in the word of God. He wants to prosper you and some of you are ready to receive it and you're right at the brink of receiving it, but your tongue sucks. (laughs) Am I too real for you? I'm so sorry. I'll tone it down a notch. Proverbs 13, 3 says this. People who are careful about what they say will save their lives. But those who speak without thinking will be 
You know what I learned in 2022? I learned that some moments I'm not feeling good and I'm feeling negative or dark or black, blank, anxious, fearful. And I realized in 2022 that not everything you feel should be expressed. Not everything that you feel should be expressed because you never know what your words are unlocking. And if you need to express what you're feeling, you got to do it in a careful way where you don't curse. Mm -hmm. You know why so, so many people sometimes are so sad and depressed and angry looking? None here, amen. You all have smiley faces. Praise God, amen. You know why? You know why so many guys have to put up a facade of being tough and smiling is soft. You, you, you want to know why? Because of the things they've spoken or the things that were spoken. Words. If you want to cross over to the other side after you transitioned from 2022 to 2023, you have to get your speech right. Here's the second thing you got to do. Write your vision down. Look what Habakkuk chapter 2 verses Two to three say, then the Lord answered me. So this was me on three. One, two, three. Write the vision. Write the vision. Make it clear on tablets so that anyone can read it quickly. The vision will still happen at the appointed time. It hurries toward its goal. It won't be a lie. If it's delayed, wait for it. It will certainly happen. It won't be I said it won't be late. I said the promise in your life shall not be late. I'm saying that the blessings that God has prepared for us shall not be late. It may seem like it's late, but it's not late. And if you're still on the wait, trust me, God's timing is perfect. But it will not delay, but you first have to what? You have to write it what? You have to write it down. Now you might be like, mm, I don't know why I came to church and hear like, you know, this type of seminary type of stuff. <laughs> Write it down. Well, let me tell you something. Simple things like, well, number one, obeying the word of God. And I understand the context of this verse, but I'm extracting the principle from it. Writing things down makes a difference. I have goals in my life that I wrote in the middle of 2022 that are for a 10 year span. I have three goals that I want to achieve in 2023 as a ministry. And I wrote them down. Because when you write them down, you make them official and it makes you accountable to it. If you are married, wouldn't it be so wonderful to sit down with your spouse one night? Talking about tonight after church? Or maybe tomorrow? And say, sweetie, babe, what do you want to accomplish in 2023 together? Let's write three goals that we want to accomplish together for our marriage or our relationship. If I had kids, in Jesus' name, if I have them, I'm going to have goals for them. So by the age of 10, I've accomplished something in their lives. And by the time that they turn 15, I want them to reach something even greater. You want to know why? Because I have a vision for my children. And if I ever have sons, I want my sons to be in ministry, to follow on on the footsteps of their father. And I want this church that is my ceiling to be their roof. No, 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 no. It's the other way around. I want the ceiling of our church to be the floor. There we go. I fixed it. I hope you can still clap at the same time. <laughs> Why? Because I have a vision. If you don't write things down, if you don't write goals down, if you don't write a vision, here's what you're going to do, bro. You're just going to wake up every day and let life pass you by. Some people say, I want to lose weight. How much weight? I want to lose 10 pounds. By when? 2027? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So what do you want to accomplish this year? Look at me for a few seconds. People, people have two choices. What kind of a person do you want to be? There are two choices. Choice number one, you let time pass you by and you accomplish nothing. What you will accomplish will possibly be building muscle on your thumb from scrolling. 
That's option number one, because you might be looking at me, you might be listening to the sermon, you might be sitting in your seat, you might be going like, ah, this is crazy, I don't think that I really need to do this, I don't think that I should apply this. And that's true, you don't need to apply writing down division, you don't need to. And my job, and my goal, and my dream is not to convince you to do it, I just want to inform you. After I'm done informing you, you have two options, my friends, my brothers, my brothers, you have two options. You have to participate in what God is speaking to you and write things down and set goals and set a vision for 2023 and accomplish something. Accomplish something that will not just live in your lifetime, but you're accomplishing things and you are writing things down that are inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you can also impact your children and eventually, in Jesus' mighty name, your children's children. You want to build something and you want to be a father or a mother that leaves an inheritance? to your children that is that is a blessing or you can listen to the sermon be like that was cute oh my god praise god go home eat go to sleep and do nothing have you noticed that people always complain about you know for example like you know new year's resolutions oh i'm tired of my weight i want to lose weight or other people say i want to gain weight yeah have you heard that i'm sure we always do in january out of all the people that complain about their weight, whether if they want to lose it or gain it, how many actually do something? And here's the, interest, here's the interesting thing that I find a very interesting observation is this, that they don't do anything. They don't like it. They complain about it. They go through consequences with it. And they complain about it even more. They know the right thing to do, but they don't do the right thing. And we're like that with God. Oh, I know I should write some goals down for 2023. Why? Because in 2022, you experienced a lack of passion. Maybe a lack of purpose. How about this one? A lack of accomplishment. How many young people right now feel so unaccomplished and they feel depressed because other people in their circle of friends are accomplishing everything? Bro, you have the same God. You have the God of the impossible. You have the God of open doors. You have the God of wisdom. You have the God that nothing is impossible for him. The same God that your friend had to, is the same God that you have. But God's like, I can't help and I can't entrust blessing to someone who can't steward. So if you can't even write it down, why should God bring it down? If you don't write your vision for this year, you'll be focused on what was instead of what will be. You'll be prone to dwell on the past instead of building for the future. Why? Because this is just natural tendency for so many of us. Joshua had lost Moses the same way some of you possibly lost something or someone. But God wants you to place your vision on what he has for you and on where you've crossed over to instead of what was lost in 2022. If you don't write it down, you'll focus on the past. If you write it down, the past might want to make you focus on it, but when you read it and you focus on what God has for you, then your mind has a switch and you can move forward. Here's the third thing if you want to cross over well. Find your word of the year. This is my last point, everybody. Personally, I'm claiming this verse in Psalms, and I want to read it to you. This is what I'm claiming for myself. This is what I'm claiming for our church. Psalms 126, verses 5 to 6. Those who plant in tears, piano please. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. Yes. I've been praying this whole, like, pretty much the second half of 2022, and I've been asking God for word of the year for 2023. And it, it wasn't like most years where he really made me feel it. But one thing that I'm learning in this season, um, after 2022, was to learn to move forward with just 60%. Not full assurance. And that is so against my personality. 
I like to know it's God. I want God to open the ceiling of my house. I want him to open the heavens and tell me, go left, take three steps forward and five steps this way. And I want clarity. But one thing I learned this year in 2020, this past year in 2022, was this, that I won't always have clarity. And I have to learn how to move forward by faith. So the word that was like really stirring in my heart was a word that I didn't feel it the same way that I have felt it from past years, but I kind of felt it. And what I said to myself this new year was this, I'm not going to wait for God to open the heavens and speak it. I'm just going to claim it by faith. So the word of the year for my personal life and the word that I'm claiming for our church is reap. Reap. I've planted with tears. I've wept as I've planted in 2022 and pa the past years, of course. Oh man, I've wept. Bitter, painful, real tears. One of the prayers that I've been making to the Lord is this, Lord, help me please. May I reap what I've planted with bitter tears. But I've planted in 2022 with you. I've, I've, I tell the Lord when I pray, like you've seen my tears. You have them collected. You have those tears that I've planted with in 2022. Let me reap with joy and shouts and singing in 2023. So I'm taking it by faith. What's your word for 2023?